Hello and welcome to another episode of GoodCast, a show where we take a closer look at the story behind the store and highlight success stories that have been made possible by donations from everyday people. I'm your host Justin, and today we're going virtual with Goodwill's Digital Career Accelerator and other online services. We'll be speaking with our digital skills supervisor, Victoria Burke, about the programs that Goodwill has to offer, how COVID has affected digital services globally, and what success looks like for people learning about the ever-evolving world of technology. So without further ado, grab your mouse and keyboard or touch screen device and let's hop into it. Hi, I'm Victoria Burke. I'm the digital skills supervisor uh, here at Goodwill Industries of Fort Worth. I am coming up on four years this June. So this is my second year being supervisor for a DCA. What are some of your duties as a supervisor and previously as a digital skills trainer? Do those overlap a lot? Yes, they're almost exactly the same job, except I have a little bit more paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what do you, what do, you do on a, uh, like a daily basis? Um, lots of client follow-up. We have a couple of sub-programs that we're overseeing on top of DCA. Um, we do like the Google Leadership Academy, MOS, which is Microsoft Office Suite Certification Training, and uh, Good Ed, which is our online high school program. And so we follow up with all those clients that are enrolled in those programs. That seems to be a bulk of what I do these days. Mm -hmm. um, when it's not that, we do have clients in DCA that are in our Google Classroom, and I will spend time grading their assignments that they turn in online and advancing them to the next subject or proctoring their assessments um, for Word, PowerPoint, Excel, things like that. And we are also building a new entrepreneurship and small business course. We have that now, but we are going to expand on that and include more interactive teachings that, you know, just to kind of make it a little bit more well-rounded than the video curriculum that we have right now. Okay. So y'all are involved in a, a ton of the programs that we host. Oh, yes. So how, how long have we had the Digital Career Accelerator program? I would say like since the beginning of January 2018. Okay. I believe is when we, I think the official start date was like December 2017. But they mm. started like rolling it out early 2018. Okay. So did that come from the partnership with Google or did that yeah. come later? Oh, no, that it came at the same time. Can you talk a little bit about that partnership and how that ties into your program? Sure. Uh, so Google and Goodwill partnered um, and Google essentially had X amount of funds that they're going to allocate to about, I believe, 150 Goodwills and Basically, they just said, we want you to serve X amount of people in digital literacy. And it was really just that. And it was up to us to determine how we used that money to educate the community in digital literacy. Some Goodwills chose, like I think a really popular one, like in Kansas, they had like a mobile training van. Some people did, like they renovated their computer lab, kind of like what we did. And, you know, it all just depended on that goodwill and what they wanted to do. And we just chose to um, offer classes on site and then eventually off site. How many people like, you know, pre COVID would you see on a daily basis, like in the classroom or a weekly basis? It always ranged. It's more a uh, small group. Mm -hmm. uh, it really just depends since whenever a client would sign up, they would start the following week. So we'd have sometimes lots of people starting basic computer skills at the same time and then maybe they would you know only want to be there for basic and then it's less coming into internet or whatever is next in their curriculum mm -hmm. so we would try to do small groups of like maybe five or less and if a client was really struggling or really just needed that extra one-on-one -on -one time or couldn't meet in person during regular class times we would do one-on-one -on -one sessions um, some of our bigger classes were more for the offsite locations, like we would do classes with the libraries, um, a couple of the high schools, and then those classes would be uh, bigger, uh, usually around 10 people or more. So what kind of clients does the DCA or any of the, the virtual programs that we have, what kind of client do we serve? Oh, all of them. They are all over the map. Um, sometimes we work with teenagers and sometimes we work with the elderly, senior citizens. Sometimes we work with the homeless population. Sometimes we work with those who are coming out of the criminal justice system. There's just a really big need for digital literacy. 
across the board. Um, they could be employed professionals and just wanting to learn more about Excel. We see all kinds of people all the time. There's really no specific DCA client, I guess you could say. Okay. So does that mean that y'all are constantly interacting with other departments within Goodwill? Oh, yes, all the time. Um, we are always working as usually hand in hand with employment services, especially when we were in person um, with referring clients back and forth. Sometimes we get people who want computer skills, but then realize, well, I really just want a new job. That's why I'm here to get the computer skills. And then we'd work with our employment programs to see which program would be a good fit. And then they can start looking for jobs through them while they're taking classes with us. Or we'll have someone on the employment program side who realizes that their client you know, can't send an email and then they have to come to us. Right. So we work hand in hand with employment. We do monthly trainings with E squared. Uh, right now we're doing indeed workshops. In fact, we have one this Friday with them where we walk them through how to create an indeed resume and take an assessment. We're going to be using the term digital literacy a lot throughout this conversation. So let's take a second to explain what that means. Most of the resources I found cited Cornell University's definition of digital literacy as the ability to find, evaluate, utilize, share, and create content using information technologies and the internet. Of course, that definition has expanded to include social media, smartphones, and mobile devices as well. It's important because as we see now, at some point you're going to need to know how to use a computer. When I worked at retail, you have to use a computer for, you know, as your POS system, you're going to have to learn how to do that or to punch in for your ship. And then at the base level, you need to know how to submit an online application. You'll need to know how to do it. And most importantly, you'll need to know how to use your email. Hardly ever will you get phone calls. You'll most likely get emails. You'll, and hardly do they hand out paper applications anymore. So at, at the very least, that's why it's important. In order to get the job, you need the, com the basic computer skills. I, I think when you're talking about computer work, like a lot of it is just kind of, you know, you have to use a, a kinesthetic model of learning where you have to do it yourself. Do you find that that's true? Or are there people who are like, oh, I have to take handwritten notes or if I hear it or if I see it, like I'm good. What kind of approach do you take with the lesson plans? Especially when we were in person, we're very much hands on they actually have to physically do it to kind of build that muscle memory. This is a computer. It's like typing. The mm -hmm. more you type, the, eventually the faster you'll get and the more comfortable you'll be. So very much hands-on. Um, we had clients that needed something to read um, so they can go home because they may not have the computer at home. Mm -hmm. um, they only use our computers in the lab. So we made a workbook where we wrote down everything that we had and more with exercises for them to practice on a computer whenever they're not in, on campus and quizzes to kind of test their knowledge so that they have something to read and to take notes on as well. Mm -hmm. So we have a little bit of both. They, they prefer the hands-on training with someone there with them um, and also taking notes. They're very uh, tactical, I guess, in that, in that sense. And so with COVID, y'all had to essentially rework your, your lesson plans, right? Because y'all were almost entirely virtual at that point. Oh, yeah. So when COVID came around, we had to take what we already had, make it virtual and make it interactive. A lot of the times our clients are usually afraid of doing something wrong. So we had to find a way that we can teach them without us standing near them. Because I think us being in the room makes them feel better. Mm -hmm. They're going through their work. Um, because they know that someone's going to be there to either fix it if something goes wrong or to correct the problem. Is that more difficult if people are already kind of having those barriers to technology? You know, is it is it as simple as like, I mean, Zoom has exploded, right, <laughs> since COVID took off. So do people kind of get, oh, I'm screen sharing so I can show them what I'm doing? Or do you have to kind of walk them through that as well? Like, how, how much more easy or difficult has taking this course become? Well, on our end as trainers, it's a little easier because we can see more, we can work with more people because all of our lessons are modules that they can do on their own time. And they have quizzes that they can constantly check themselves on and just lots of self-paced work that we can check 
on our time as well and make sure they're doing it all correctly. On the other hand, it's a little more difficult because of the little steps in between that. We usually do have to walk them through that sometimes on the phone Mm -hmm. because yeah, we do get a lot, not a lot of people used Zoom before this. And now that's what they're having to do for a lot of what they do, not just working with us. So it's been a learning curve, I think, more for the clients um, on those little in-between bits, like the accessing the classroom. And then if we do a Zoom meeting, the little pieces of that are the struggle. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the more they do it, the easier it becomes. And you don't serve like a large Spanish speaking population as well, right? Uh, yes. How did that come about? And do you think that is like a population that is not as well served in our area? Yes, absolutely. Uh, It came about in the first few months of us having this DCA program, and we were still trying to work out what's going to be the best fit moving forward for bigger classes. Well, we had this lady who was a representative of this other organization, this other nonprofit in Fort Worth, and she says she deals with mostly Spanish-speaking clients. Do we have anything to service them with? Um, she went specifically computer classes, because at that point, we, are, we were putting it out there that we had that sort of training. And at the time, it was only myself running the DCA, and I can't speak Spanish. So <laughs> that what her coming over and saying, like, I have like, maybe three clients that need the service, really set the ball in motion for us to figure out how we're going to offer this in Spanish, mm-hmm. because we realized we needed bilingual trainers since Fort Worth and Denton have high Spanish speaking populations. So Diana essentially translated everything that you all had put together into Spanish, right? How, how collaborative is that, that process of coming up with course content? It's extremely collaborative. When, when we first started, again, it was just me and a lot of just figuring out what works best. Mm -hmm. And then it became, okay, well, now we have a structure, but more just hands-on, no additional content. And then it became, okay, I have this one client that can't, for the life of me, retain anything. (laughs) And now we have to make something that can be printed out and handed and studied. And then created like the base PowerPoints for a couple of our lessons. Mm -hmm. And then we brought Diana in. And with every new staff person we had, whatever presentations we had, I would share it with that staff person say, this is what we have. This is what we usually used to teach. If you want to make any changes, if you want to add or take away, go for it, do it. And then we'll all take a look at it and move forward with what's best. So every presentation, every content or material that we have has essentially been looked at by four different staff members who have either added something to it, taken out something or changed the layout. There, it's all just this big collaborative piece, really. So you have this very strong base component that you can change as needed depending on the client. Right. According to a Stanford article from June of last year, 42% of Americans were working from home full time, with only about 26% of people working on site. Now, these numbers are subject to change as some businesses start opening back up, but maybe not as much as you think. More and more businesses are becoming open to the idea of an alternating work schedule. Digital services and access to the internet aren't seen as a luxury anymore and are increasingly becoming necessary. So you might want to hang on to that webcam for a little while longer. So outside of the computer basic courses that you mentioned, what other virtual services do we offer to people? Um, Right now we are offering our online high school, which is good as so clients can go in and earn their high school diploma online as well as a entry level certification um on top of that like uh customer service or child development associates things like that um we offer google leadership academy which is just a whole catalog of just virtual credentials and they range they're all over the map like we have adobe we have clinical medical assistant we have certified admin professional hvac training oh goodness there's so many Mm-hmm. Then we have Microsoft Office certification training, which is online through our partner Jasper Active, where clients can clients who already have a beginner's knowledge of Microsoft, like they're fairly comfortable using it, can log in and take their knowledge from intermediate to expert and take um, a nationally recognized certification exam to become either a Microsoft Office specialist 
expert or master. And those are all virtual and at your own pace, right? Right. Yes. What is the benefit to that for clients or, you know, as, as an instructor? Well, as an instructor and for a client, it, the self-paced aspect is hugely important and a great benefit to both of us because uh, some of our clients have full-time jobs. Um, some of them watch their kids all day. And so when it's self-paced, they can make their own schedule. Mm-hmm. And also just being a credential in any sense, anything that adds to your resume um, is a huge bonus when entering the job market, especially when, let's say you don't, you didn't go on to college or community college or a trade school. These credentials are really what um, demonstrates your skill set and just could help move you ahead of the pack when you're applying for certain positions. I'd be curious to know, like, did you have to go through any of these courses yourself? Uh, did you want to? Is that like a, a requirement for your job? So you kind of get an understanding of what your clients are going through? If I have the opportunity, I always go through the program. MOS was the first virtual credentialing that we went to. And I was the first guinea pig to go through the course. So I knew what was happening um, and what the clients would see. And then that's been extremely beneficial because I get emails all the time about that software. <laughs> Sometimes it's a little tricky, but the, the fact that I'm able to help the clients in that way and say, oh yeah, don't worry about that. Just, <laughs> just move on or try to try it in this way. It, it helps a lot because I'm not going in blind whenever they have a question. With our basic curriculum, I took all the assessments first. So I knew what the students were going to be asked when they take their tests. So I make sure to include whatever is going to be on the test in the lessons. And I have all the digital skills trainers take those assessments too before they start teaching. So they know that these students are going to need need to know XYZ material. One exciting thing about Goodwill's Digital Career Accelerator is that all of our basic curriculum courses are free to the public for those that sign up. And when it comes to our virtual certification courses, clients are given opportunities to pursue scholarships, partial funding through partner organizations, and other means to ensure that no client is paying completely out of pocket. What does success look like for people coming out of the virtual service programs that we offer? Since we work so closely with all the other programs, when we know that a client is wanting a job, we refer them to that program. So we're like working at the same time. So they, they get that. It's just not from myself or Diana. Mm-hmm. Um, and success does vary from client to client. Sometimes for success, you know, at the end of the day, we love it if you got a job. We would absolutely love it. We would love it if you completed your credential on time. That success in itself is completing a program. And then sometimes the little success, I mean, the little successes for me are when you've gone through a couple of courses and something that, stru- that gave you great difficulty in the beginning, you just do instantly without mm-hmm. having to ask for help. That, those are the tiny successes that I personally love. <laughs> it's like I, could, I had a client that I saw him every year to work on his resume, every year, and I would never understand it. And I go, you know, every year you come down around the same time asking my help to edit your resume, but we've been through this. It's in your Google Drive. You just pop in and change it. And I think for two years, he struggled remembering, or three years, he struggled remembering how to access his Google Drive for three years. And then I saw him again last year, virtually, but, you know, and I had him share his screen to walk me through what he's doing. And he just opened his Google Drive and opened his resume and found it all by himself. (laughs) And that's a success for me. Mm -hmm. What does that feel like seeing those success stories, especially like if we take, for example, like Tassie, who who works here and has had like a couple of stories done about her. Um, what is it like to see people succeed and come out of these certifications? It just makes you all warm and fuzzy inside. Uh, <laughs> we don't. The thing with myself and Diana, as digital skills trainer and working with the employment programs, we don't always get to see the end result mm-hmm. of the work that we do. We don't always get to see it. Um, like those little success, that the little success story I told you, had I not met with that guy last year, I wouldn't have known that he learned to be comfortable doing that on his own. Mm-hmm. Had, he, had I not seen him, we don't get to see the little things build up to the great successes like that. Um, so when we do, it's just, it's kind of like, all right, this is why I do what I do. Mm-hmm. I mean, when I first met Tassie, she was working in the back, um, in e-commerce 
and asking for textbooks on how to do this Microsoft Word thing because she hadn't had to really use it too much. And to see her now, the second I walk into the front door of the office in her new position and her sending out all these HR emails is like, wow, like a, <laughs> of, uh, an amazing accomplishment to see that she's, I mean, she's got more certifications than I do. <laughs> and that's pretty great. And I think she's like our resident Excel expert. <laughs> It's, it's pretty awesome to see our clients succeed in any capacity, whether that's knowing how to access Google Drive, getting a certification, getting a job, um, applying to a job by themselves. I mean, we love it. It's just, it makes the job worthwhile. It's no secret that businesses and individuals have had to make huge changes to their operating system due to the effects of the pandemic. We've seen it in schools, restaurants, and even our own programs and services. Broadly speaking, though, this shift in digital services was already underway on a global scale and was escalated dramatically out of necessity. Organizations that were on the edge of implementing these services had to make that leap or risk collapse. And that growth isn't something that can be flipped with a reset button overnight, meaning that digital skills will become even more crucial for everyone in years to come. The United Nations Conference on Trade and Development has noticed this trend and identified areas where we all need to improve. The first of which being that governments need to prioritize national digital readiness for both businesses and consumers. That can mean providing educational materials for schools or allocating funds to organizations like Goodwill that specialize in this training. So last year uh, for the 2020 board staff luncheon, your team was presented with the Workforce Development Team of the Year. How did that feel like receiving that award and how did, how did it affect your process going forward? You know, what are your goals for the, the program in the, in the next coming months or years? Well, it was very unexpected. I mean, there was a time where we were meeting with all the workforce development every day. And we were hearing about all the other programs and all the work that they were doing and how hard and challenging it had been. You know, going to virtual is no easy feat for any program in this company. And so we weren't expecting that considering how wonderful and how amazing all the other programs were and handled this shift. Um, but we were very happy to, <laughs> to have been bestowed such an honor. It just felt so rewarding that, you know, that we were being recognized because a lot of our work isn't, it's not placement based. We don't mm. put people in the job. So a lot of our work doesn't really get seen or recognized that much. So it felt nice to know that people were looking at us and seeing the work that we were doing and, and understanding its importance. So right now our goals are to a complete this entrepreneurship online course that we're making. We want to make our good ed and good well, leadership academy courses more successful. So we've expanded on our screening process to make sure the clients are going into those programs know exactly what they're getting into. So it's not all overwhelming or confusing. And also we're going to have to figure out how we're going to transition back into potentially in-person classes. We've been asked to do a couple of those recently. So that's another thing that we have to tackle this year. And I mean, really just looking at what we have now and just making it better. I always mm -hmm. like going through a curriculum and I mean, there's always room for improvement. Is there anything that you want uh, people to know about as far as the program goes? Do you have anything that you want to plug like that sort of thing? We have a few scholarships left for Goodwill Leadership Academy and a few scholarships left for Good Ed. So if you're in need of, an, of a high school diploma and want to take those classes virtually, um, please let us know so we can get you started on that path, as well as for Google Leadership Academy, too. And if you are interested in entrepreneurship, small business, also let us know and we can put you on the waiting list for when that curriculum is ready to go. Any virtual service that we provide usually ends in a credential. And there's lots of jobs out there right now. A lot of them require either X amount of experience or the education to make up for those years in experience. We have a lot of people who are making career changes. And if you want to stand out from the pack, I mean, you can have one job position and thousands, hundreds of people could be applying for that same job. And those, those credentials are, could be what sets you apart from everyone else. So there you have it, folks. That is going to do it for us here today. If you're interested in signing up for any of these programs, I would highly encourage you to check out our website. I'm currently enrolled in the Adobe certification courses, and it's been super helpful in enhancing my creative skills. That being said, thank you all so much for listening to this episode of Goodcast. I'm looking forward to catching you all in the next one as we celebrate Goodwill Week in May. 
be on the lookout for some exciting news in the next few weeks, check out our social media channels, and hey, maybe consider sharing the show with a friend. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you find podcasts.